Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Eleanor Hawkins, and welcome to Tell a Story Time in the New Year. And now I'm going to read The Library, A Magic Castle. Come to the magic castle when you are growing tall. Rows upon rows of word windows line every single wall. They reach up high, as high as the sky, and you want to open them all. For every time you open one, a new adventure has begun. The Library, A Magic Castle. And now, boys and girls, our very first story that I've chosen for this morning is entitled, The Cats Who Stayed for Dinner. One evening in spring, a man and a woman moved into a new apartment. Just outside their door, there was a garden. It was a pretty garden with flowers and grass and even a tree. Oh, they were very happy because it isn't easy to find a real garden for your very own right in the middle of a big city. The next morning as they woke up, they ran to the window to admire their garden. But what do you think they saw? Cats. They saw so many cats that they almost couldn't see the flowers or the grass or the tree. Big cats, black cats, little cats, yellow cats, white cats, gray cats, kittens, cats with spots, and cats with stripes. And every single cat was skinny, scraggly, scrawny, and smudged with the soot of the city. And every cat had fleas. All day the cats played in the pretty garden. They chased the bugs and the butterflies, and they smelled the flowers and climbed the tree and played a game of tag along the top of the fence. Oh, they had a very good time. But the man and the woman did not have a good time at all. They wanted to sow flower seeds and to mow the long grass and dig out the choking weeds and rest in the sweet spring sun. But with all those cats in the garden, there simply wasn't room enough for them too. That night, the cats disappeared. They went out in search of food. Every night they had to look for leftovers that had been thrown away. For since they had no home, they had no one to feed them. The man and the woman went into the garden. They found a, they found a big hole under the fence. This is how those cats get in, they declared. We will fill it in, and then they, we will have the garden for ourselves. They filled in the hole under the fence. The next morning, they woke up smiling. They hurried to the window to admire their garden. But can you guess what they saw? Yes, cats. The big cats had climbed over the fence. Then they had dug a new hole under the fence to let the kittens that were still too little to climb so high. Every day, the cats played in the pretty garden. They just would not go away. The man and the woman were the ones who had to stay away. They could only look at the weeds growing stronger and the grass growing longer. They could only look at the sun and their tree. Oh, they were most unhappy. One evening, the woman found that there was a bit of milk left over after supper. I may as well give it to some of those skinny, scraggly, scrawny cats, she decided. And she poured it into a pan and put it in the garden. Now that was on Monday. On Tuesday, she ordered a whole extra quart of milk from the milkman, by mistake, of course. Do you know what she did with it? On Wednesday, she bought too much chopped meat at the butcher store. Another mistake? On Thursday, she came upon an extra dozen of eggs in her shopping bag. But they did not go to waste, for eggs are fine for cats. On Friday, the mackerel in the market looked so firm and fresh that the woman completely forgot that they were having supper with friends that evening. But she bought some mackerel and brought it home. Then, of course, she couldn't throw it away because she knew how cats feel about fish. Now, mind you, the woman warned the cats, just because I give you food, you mustn't think I like having you here in our garden. I just happened to have bought some extra food by mistake. The cat sat still and stared at her. 
Then they all close their big, round, yellow, green eyes. On Sunday, it rained. From their window, the man and the woman could see the cats huddled together under the weeds. I don't have much to do today, the man announced. I think I'll rig up some kind of shelter for those cats, just for something to do, of course. He made a tent of striped canvas and stretched it over a corner of the garden so that the cats would have a dry place to sleep. But remember, he scolded, just because I've made a shelter for you from the rain, you are not to think I like having you here in our garden. I just happen to have nothing else to do today. The cat sat still and stared at him. Then each one winked a big, round, yellow, green eye. And so the summer went slowly by. The cats began to be, not be quite so skinny or scraggly or scrawny because the woman fed them every day. They began to feel good. And when cats feel good, as you probably noticed, they began to wash themselves. They washed and they washed and they washed away their smudge of city soot. They washed so hard that even they washed away all their fleas. Then one day winter came. All of a sudden it snowed and the wind was wild. The man and the woman stayed indoors, warm and snug. Now the cats huddled together under the icicles in the little garden. The man and the woman almost couldn't see them through the thick frost on the window. But they knew they were there because now they knew that the cats had no other place to go. I think I'll do a bit of building at my workbench in the basement, said the man, just to get some practice, you understand. He worked all day hammering and sawing. He worked almost all night too. The woman couldn't sleep for all the racket he was making. Bam, buzz, bam, bang, bang, bang. And she could not sleep in the quiet in between because then she could hear the meowing of the cats in the cold quiet of the snow. In the morning, she ran to the window. Now, what do you think she saw? Well, yes, cats, but look, look what else? A row of tiny houses. They went into the garden, the man and the woman, and this time he did not shout and stamp. This time she did not scold and swish her apron. This time they said, at first we did not want you here, but now we must admit that we have come to like having you for our very own. We know now that there is room for all of us in this pretty garden. And that, boys and girls, is a story. The cats who stayed for dinner. And now, boys and girls, stay tuned, and we'll be back in just a moment to read from our big Do You Know book. Please stay tuned. And now, boys and girls, I'm going to read from our Big Do You Know book. Do you know all about the month of January? 
Do you know the flower for January is the carnation and the birthstone for the month is the garnet? Do you know some of the most famous authors of children's books were born in January? Do you know that Jacob Grimm was born on January the 14th, 1785 in Germany? He and his brother Wilhelm had a tremendous interest in German poetry and folklore, and they were best known for their collection, their collection of Grimm's fairy tales. We all love them. Do you know that Hugh Lofting was born on January the 14th, 1896 in England? He wrote many books, but the one we all love is a story of Dr. Doolittle. And that was written in 1920. And then he considered the series of Dr. Doolittle to follow. Do you know A. A. Milne was born on January the 18th, 1882 in London? For over half a century, children and adults have selected Winnie the Pooh stories that everyone enjoys. Younger children love to hear the stories read aloud. Older boys and girls reread them, and college students study Pooh's adventure along with Shakespeare. Do you know Louis Brer was born in a village in France? At the age of three, due to an accident in his father's workshop, he was blinded. Seventeen years later, he published a system of printing and writing for the blind. He opened the doors to knowledge to all of those who cannot see. Boys and girls, let me remind you to mark your calendar this week, your new calendar, and mark it for the story hour at your public library. Yes, boys and girls, we have wonderful story hours every week. And two, visit any of the libraries in the Craven, Pamlico, Carteret Regional Library System. Go and listen to some good stories and check out some very good books on your very own library card. And now stay tuned and we'll be back with another story in just a moment. And now, boys and girls, I'm going to read you the story, the old story of Rumpelstiltskin. Once there was a poor miller who had a beautiful daughter of whom he was very proud. One day he foolishly told the king his daughter could spin gold out of straw. The king loved gold above everything else, and he commanded that the maiden be brought to the castle. And when she arrived, she was led to a large room half full of straw. She was placed before a spinning wheel. The king said to her, If all this straw is not spun into gold by morning, you shall die. He went out and locked the door behind him with a huge key. The poor girl sat down in a corner of the room and began to cry. She knew that she could not spin straw into gold. Suddenly the door opened just a crack and a strange little man squeezed into the room. Good day, Miller's daughter. What can I, what are you crying about? 
on me, she scrawled. I must die on the morrow, for I know not how to spend this heap of straw into gold. Well, now, what will you give me if I spend it for you? asked the little man. Oh, oh, the nexus I'm wearing, replied the maiden. The little man agreed, and sitting down at the wheel, spun it around merrily, whirr, whirr, whirr. By morning the straw was gone, and in its place was the gold. Then he twisted the necklace twice around his waist and left as silently as he had come. When the king came the next morning, he was pleased to see the gold, but he wanted more. He led the girl to a larger room, two-thirds full of straw, and ordered her to spin it all into gold before sunrise. And again the maiden began to cry, and again the little man slipped through the crack of the door and said, what will you give me, Miller's daughter, to spin your straw into gold this time? This ring on my finger, she replied. So the droll little man set the wheel spinning twice as fast as before, and by daylight the straw was all spun into gold. Then he put, on the, put the ring on his finger and was gone. The king came at dawn and was delighted to see the store of gold. Yet his greedy heart was not satisfied. He took the miller's daughter to a vast chamber, packed to the ceiling with straw. Spend all of this straw into gold this night, he said, and tomorrow you shall be my queen. As soon as the maid was alone, the queer little man appeared again and said to her, Now what shall I have this time for my labor? Oh, I have nothing more to give you, sighed the maiden. Then promise me your first child after you become queen, said the little man. The maiden knew no other way out of her trouble and promised to do what was asked. That night the wheel whirled thwice as fast as before, and when the sun shone in the chamber, all the straw was gold. The king was delighted to find all the straw spun into gold, and as he had promised, that very day he made the miller's daughter his queen. Now at the birth of her first child, the queen was overjoyed. Oh, she had quite forgotten the queer little man until the day he slipped into her chamber and said, Where is the child you promised me for spinning the king's straw into gold? Oh, the queen wept bitterly and begged him not to take her baby. At last, his, this odd little heart softened, and he said, I will give you three days to guess my name. If you can do it, you may keep the child. And then he slipped out of the room as quickly as he had come in. The next day when the little man came, the queen gave him the names of all the kings and princes that she could think of. But to all of them, he gleefully answered, Oh, ho, ho, ho. No, no, my royal dame, that is not my name. That is not my name. The next day, the queen sent messengers throughout the kingdom to collect all the curious names of poor folk. And when the little man skipped into the room, she began with cow ribs, bandy legs, spending shanks, and so on. But to all of them, the little man shouted, that is not my name. Now the third day, the last of the messengers came and said, Oh, forgive me, sorrowful queen. I could find no new name but one. Yesterday, as I was passing through a strange wood where foxes and hares say good night to each other, I saw a small hut, and in the doorway a funny little man sang this song. Today I bake, tomorrow I brew. Today for one, tomorrow for two. For how should she learn, poor royal dame, that Rumpelstiltskin is my name? Well, now, when the queen heard this, she knew the singer must have been her little gold spinner. At sunset, the little man came skipping in and said, Tell me my name, if you can. Is it Hans, she teased. Oh, no, no, no. And then she said, is it short legs? Oh, no, 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 he said. Well, then can it be Rumpelstiltskin? Oh, the fairies have told you. The fairies have told you, shrieked the little old man in a rage. And he stomped his feet 
and he's danced and pranced all around, and then all of a sudden, he ran through the door, and you know, boys and girls, he was never found again. And that is the story of Rumpelstiltskin. And now stay tuned, and we'll be back with another story in just a moment. Now, boys and girls, I'm going to read you the story, Little Red Riding Hood. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who was dearly loved by all, by everyone, most of all by her grandmother. Wherever she went, she always wore a little red cape with a hood, which her grandmother made for her. So people called her Little Red Riding Hood. One morning, her mother packed a basket and said, here is a piece of cake, a pat of butter, and a bottle of grape juice. Take them to your grandmother, Little Red Riding Hood. She is sick in bed, and they will do her good. Keep right on the path, don't play on the way, and don't talk to strangers. And when you see your grandmother, don't forget to say good day. Little Red Riding Hood promised. She took the basket, waved goodbye to her mother, and started off along the path through the wood. She had not gone far before she met a wolf. Good morning, Little Red Riding Hood, said the wolf politely. Where are you going and what have you in your basket? Oh, I'm going to see my grandmother, said Little Red Riding Hood. I have a piece of cake, a pat of butter, and a bottle of grape juice for her. Well, said the wolf, and where does your grandmother live? Oh, on the other side of the wood, said Little Red Riding Hood, pointing with her finger. My grandmother is sick in bed. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, said the wolf. Why don't you pick her some flowers? Oh, I promised my mother I'd stay on the path, said Little Red Riding Hood. A pretty bunch of flowers would surely make her grandmother feel better. Don't you agree, Little Red Riding Hood? and away he went through the trees. In no time at all, Little Red Riding Hood was wandering about in the wood, picking flowers here and there. Meanwhile, the wolf ran straight to Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother's house. Who's there? called Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother from inside. Oh, it's Little Red Riding Hood, said the wolf in a wee little voice. Come in, my dear called the grandmother, and the wolf went in and ate Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother up. Then he put on her nightgown and cap, climbed into bed, and pulled the covers up over his nose. Soon Little Red Riding Hood came skipping along toward her grandmother's house. Good day, grandmother, she called. She went in and stepped close to her grandmother's bed. Oh, grandmother, she cried for her grandmother looked very strange. What big ears you have. The better to hear you with, my dear, said the wolf, rolling his eyes. Oh, grandmother, what big eyes you have. 
cried Little Red Riding Hood. The better see you with, my dear, said the wolf, snapping his jaws. Oh, grandmother, cried Little Red Riding Hood, what big teeth you have. Oh, all the better to eat you with, said the wolf, and he sprang from the bed and ate Little Red Riding Hood up. A passing woodsman stepped into the house to see how Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother was feeling. And when he saw the wolf, he said, Aha! I found you at last, you wicked old rascal. He lifted his axe and with one blow killed him. And then he cut the wolf open and out stepped Little Red Riding Hood and her grandmother. Oh, they thanked the woodsman for what he had done. Then all of them sat down and they ate the cake and the butter and drank the grape juice, which Little Red Riding Hood had brought. And that, boys and girls, is a story of Little Red Riding Hood. And now I have a short poem here to read, and one that I like very much. Animal crackers, animal crackers and cocoa to drink, what is the finest supper, I think? When I'm grown up and can have what I please, I think I shall always insist on these three. And now, boys and girls, I see it's time for us to close our book of stories. But you know, boys and girls, I want you to be sure and visit your library sometime during this week and check out some very good books on your very own library card. And so now we do close our stories for this morning. But you know, we'll be back next Saturday morning. And we'll be looking forward to seeing each one of you watching Tell a Story Time and listening to our stories. So until then, this is Eleanor Hawkins saying bye-bye for Tell a Story Time.